Teresa Contessa Gixioli. Teresa Contessa Gixioli, 1800 1873, was the married lover of Lord Byron while he was living in Ravenna and writing the first five cantos of Don Juan. She wrote the biographical account Lord Byron's Life in Italy. On 19 January 1818, Teresa married an elderly diplomat, Count Alessandro Gixioli, who was 50 years older than her. It was three days later, on 22 January, that she met Lord Byron at the home of Countess Albrizzi. Count Gixioli was a ruthless and opportunistic nobleman who had ingratiated himself with Napoleon during his campaign in Italy in 1796, and during the French rule of Italy during the Napoleonic era, Count Gixioli held a series of high offices, making him one of the most powerful men in Italy. When France was on the verge of defeat in 1814, Count Gixioli defected over to the opposing side and came to enjoy power under the Pope, who he had starting out serving before defecting over to Napoleon. A cold, calculating man who had preferred to serve the strong rather than the weak, supporting Napoleon as long as he was winning and switched sides the moment he started losing, Count Gixioli inspired no love or affection from anyone who knew him. Even Gixioli's children from his previous marriages denounced their father was a cold, grasping man only interested in money and power. There is no evidence that Teresa, his third wife, ever felt any affection for her husband. Byron's relationship with Teresa was a dangerous one as Count Gixioli was still a powerful man who was widely believed to have been behind the murder in 1816 of another nobleman who was suing him for having seized his land. In a letter to her sent on 22, April 1819, written in Italian, Byron wrote, You sometimes tell me I have been your first real love. In a letter, Byron wrote that she mailed him some of her pubic hair, which was a traditional Italian gesture that indicated her willingness to begin an affair. The Countess Gixioli lived with Byron as his common-law wife first in Ravenna and then in Genoa until 1823. Her father, Count Ruggiero Gambo was an Italian nationalist who wanted to unify all of the Italian states into one, a project that would also mean the Austrian Empire, which ruled much of what is now northern Italy, would also lose much territory. Under Teresa's influence, Byron joined a secret pseudo-Masonic society dedicated to Italian unity and driving out the Austrians that had already been joined by her father and brother. For plotting against the Austrian Empire, Count Gamba was exiled to the countryside of the Romagna region. In 1823, the Austrian authorities allowed Count Gamba to leave his exile in the Romagna with the condition that the Countess Gixioli had to end her relationship with Byron and return to her husband. The news that the Countess Gicoli was leaving him helped precipitate Byron's decision to go fight on the Greek side in the Greek War of Independence. When Byron boarded the Hercules, the ship that was to take him from Genoa to Greece. It caused passionate grief from Gixioli, who broke down in tears as she said farewell to her lover. Going along with Byron to Greece was her brother, Pietro Gamba, who was to serve as Byron's bumbling right-hand man. Later in life, she married the Marquis de Boise, who, even after their marriage, boasted of her liaison with Byron, introducing her as Madame la Marquise de Boise, Autrefois la maîtresse de my lord Byron, the Marquise de Boise, formerly the mistress of Lord Byron. Alexander Dumas included her as a minor character in his novel The Count of Monte Cristo using the disguised name Countess G. Lord Byron also used this shortened name in his journals. At a party in Paris hosted by Napoleon Roman III in the 1860s, the wife of the American ambassador introduced a wealthy American tourist. Mrs. Mary R. Darby, to the now elderly Contessa Gixioli, saying she was one of the last people alive who knew Byron personally. Mrs. Darby introduced herself by saying that she had heard Byron was king of poets, only for Gixioli, who was still in love with him, to say that Byron was the king of men. Mrs. Darby befriended Gixioli, who showed her two manuscripts that she had written in French, recalling her youth with Byron. Mrs. Darby who quickly became Gixioli's best friend, worked with her on turning the manuscripts into books, 
only one of which has survived. When the Contessa Gixioli died in 1873, with no children, her papers were inherited by her grandnephew, Count Carlo Gamba, who hid them away in his family's archives, believing that his grand aunt's scandalous relationship with Byron would damage the reputation of the Gamba family. Not until 2005 were one of the books the Contessa Gixioli wrote about her relationship with Byron published.